Okay, so last month or so, or a couple months, y'all have no, some people have no idea about this YouTube stuff and what all goes on. What I do is every night I upload the video, get it on, and then I just, I leave it there. It's automatically set to where y'all can't see it. All right. YouTube does updates all the time. I don't know if they cracked some kind of update and when it started uploading there, it defaulted back to making it public. I'm fixing to find out though right here. So what I've done is I've deleted this video off. It pissed me off. Cause see the vi when y'all watched it or the video published last night, it, the video was not ready to go. It was not monetized. It had no tags on it, had no description nothing jack squat crapola so what i'm about to do is i'm going to delete this video off of this thing and i'm going to re-upload it five o'clock in the freaking morning here right quick and because i'm not going to get because see it it knocked it, it did a lot of stuff when it uh when it did this here so y'all just enjoy this video right quick right here we'll catch y'all later later taters you see that screen right there See the hydraulic motor mounted to it. There, I'll take you right here and show you the uh, other one. So Derek was uh, stepping there and then stepping there and then using the fan motor to step get on up on top of it up there. <laughs> Jake said, that's more than just stepping on. Yeah, yeah that is not. Y'all can see where it's broke all the way around. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think this as much as that thing's done, they ought to have that thing, that motor, cause that's all that's holding that motor up there on that thing is that. And that's got, that motor's got a lot of torque on it when that fan kicks on, but you can see. Yeah. Let's crawl up here. So you see that big hydraulic motor? Well, that's not really big, but I mean, it's good size, a lot of weight right there. It's got the hydraulic hoses on it too. It's got to make a circuit. That's a gigantic fan. I mean, that thing is pushing some air. So that's why we stopped it because we didn't want the fan to end up going through the radiator and stuff because ain't no telling what that deck and radiator costs in this thing. Because I mean, the radiator is this entire square. I mean, it is monster. You can see the fire nozzles right there for the fire suppression system. So Derek has a button in there he can hit and discharge this entire, it's got nozzles all over it there. And it'll also set itself off too, if I'm not mistaken. So you can hear the fans off now. It only runs when it needs it. It's just barely running right now, just pulling a little bit of air. It's off. All right, he's about to crawl up in there and his uh, panels up. They're both on hydraulic cylinders. You can see a small one going up. Oh, you can see this fire extinguisher tank. See that big red tank right there? It's a monster. Close the big one on the back. That thing beeps like that, so if, you know somebody's around or something, so that they don't they'll know. Which, I mean, it's annoying, but I mean it's a good idea too. So 
y'all get ready. I'm about to do one of the uh, service truck tours on our service truck. And then there's our newer one right there. That's 2020 right there. Just about closed. You see that triangle that's right to the right of the T right there on Tiger Cat? There's actually, when it closes, there's a camera right there looking back behind him so he can kind of see what's behind him on the screen all right so he's closed up we brought our 726 up here because our undercarriage here we don't have uh, we were a little bit worried about it that we were gonna have to uh go ahead and take the machine down because it's just about done so we went ahead and brought the 726 up here just in case we had to do that and hope that we don't end up having to run it none because this this is just some tough ground up here to try to cut timber in with a rubber tire machine our other 830 had a nine liter cummins in it of course it wasn't a missions motor this one here has the fpt in it I for, it's not a nine liter, it's a eight something liter is what's in it. And it's a uh, three, 300 something horsepower, 330 maybe, or maybe 300, I can't remember. It's hard to keep up with this stuff anymore. We got so many blooming machines now, I can't keep up with what's what. I used to know all the specs on everything back in the day when we only had just a few machines. And I kept up with everything on logging equipment, not, not so much anymore. There's so many different variables of all this stuff, man. There goes Kevin, he just keyed up. We're gonna go knock two loads out real quick. It's almost three o'clock. We can get them here in about 15 minutes probably. Kevin broke Chad's hard while ago. Chad come up here, and I think Chad probably figured he was gonna get to go on home. <laughs> and uh, Kevin told him that we were gonna get those two more trucks loaded. Exact same thing right there is what it's gonna be. Yeah. That's it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Alright, you gonna edit this stuff? I might. 
<laughs> I'm like, I said, we're going to have a safety meeting here right quick. Give us your credentials, man. I mean, you sleep in Holiday Inn Express last night or what, dog? All your buddies are going wild. I got a lot of people in Tupelo, man, that watch I, this stuff, so you better get it right. I know. I'm going to try. All right. My name is Michael. I do safety meetings for a, different logging companies. I'm actually an EMT. I've been an EMT since 1999. I work for Tupelo Fire Department. And uh, me and Tim was talking the last safety meeting on tourniquets. And uh, actually, we actually had a class a couple months ago about it and uh, realized that you know, the, the, used to be tourniquets were last resort. Um, they were always talked down on. That you put a tourniquet on somebody, you're guaranteed to lose that limb. Uh, you know, and that kind of got in the medical field that it was kind of scared to use a tourniquet. Um, and what they found out, most of the time, you know, we, we learned a lot about medical stuff in wartime. And that's what that class was talking about. And uh, pretty much now everything that we were taught uh, as far as tourniquet was, was some of it's true, but but a lot of it's changed. Um, over time, they've, they've realized that if you do put a tourniquet on somebody, um, you know, it used to be the golden hour. Um, as long as you could get it on a tourniquet, get them to the hospital, doctor knew it, you know, day to time, document everything, um, they may could save that limb. Um, but as medicine's progressed, you know, now we're doing heart transplants, brain surgery, all this kind of stuff. The medical field is, is revolving. Um, in the class that we had, they actually told us that, you know, there's actually been times where tourniquets put on somebody um, for more than you know, five hours um, and stuff like that. We talked about crush syndrome one time. It's kind of it's kind of in that neighborhood where once you put a tourniquet on, yes, the tissue starts dying out and, and, and stuff because you're losing blood flow. But with uh, the medical stuff, we, we, we do class and stuff. We tell the uh, paramedics what we've done, how long it's been on. They can kind of counteract the myoglobin, the potassium, stuff like that to keep from actually going and causing heart failure and stuff like that. It beats the alternative of dying. Of dying. Right. Yeah. So we work out here around this equipment uh, getting cut bad. Right. You know, if you're running a saw or something like that or even on one of these machines Correct. getting crushed to the point it, it cuts a limb off and right. everything right. all right when you cut a main blood flow artery vein like that right you don't have much time no no How, what what kind of time frame are we looking at somebody they're, they're gone oh man Minutes, that's yeah, right. That's minutes. Um, minutes. Uh, but the, what we learned on that tourniquet too is, you know, all all the law officers right now, uh, with, with the world way it is, you know, they'll shoot somebody in a minute. Um, you know, and and that's what we, what we found out is all our, all our law enforcement now are actually carrying this. This, this is a this is actually a cat tourniquet. Um, they put them they put them on themselves. If you, if you find a cop that's been shot or police officer, um, they're gonna have this on their vest somewhere. Um, right. It's got a red tab. Most of the red tab's gonna be showing, and we we actually, if they can't get it on themselves, they're trained now. The PD, uh, Highway Patrol, all they're trained actually when they get shot to put it on themselves. It's maybe a leg, arm, or anything. And actually, when we get there, um, we can help them a lot better off. Uh, if, if we get a hold to somebody that's unconscious, you know, um, and it, it, it's it's simple. All it is is it goes in, it goes around whatever limb they're gonna put it on the arm or leg goes around. Um, it's got this little tab right here, as you can see on the camera. Uh, this thing actually will twist around and lock in itself, and then once this goes over, you document the time on it. That's right. Um, it's, All right, so let's say I've got my arm cut off right here. Okay. Say it's cut off right there, and you're gonna put it, you're uh, gonna go just above, just above, just above the cut, just like that right there. He pulls the tab. This goes inside, goes around. It don't have to be perfect, perfect, because it's got enough right. Velcro on it. It's going to hold, oh, yeah. and you just twist it down. Right, man. and what we're going to do is we're going to twist this around, and it, all we're wanting to do is stop the blood flow, and that's it. Catch that's it how, right there. That's it. That's how quick it went on. And you can see it when it when it stops the blood flow. It's just like taking a guard hose that's and exactly kinking right. it up, because that's basically what you're doing that's with right. a tourniquet right there. So you can take somebody. The reason why I wanted to show this right here, I've had some tourniquets sent to me the la these last two. These things don't cost very much money. You can get them off Amazon. A lot of different supply places have them and things like that. But I wanted Michael to go over things and show it here. They come just like this. Uh, my new uh, tool belt that I have from Hus Varner, this actually fits in the first aid pouch on it. It's, I mean, it's, it's a little bit longer than your hand right there, but it's still very easy to put it in your back pocket or anything right. like that somebody running a saw out there they're crazy if they don't have something like this right. because you can save your own life that's right and you know and like i said you don't have to have this a tourniquet you can use rope uh webbing 
belt. 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 Uh, actually, I have seen times where farmers actually cut their shirts and make turn it like anything that anything. you can get your hands right. on to stop uh, that bleeding. Right. Because if you can stop that bleeding, you got a chance. You got a chance. That's right. You got uh, a chance. You know, and it is like you know when I teach these guys out here first aid, you know I teach them which is you know direct pressure. And then we talk about you know pressure points, and then it's turning. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can't get it with direct pressure, then we find a pressure point, and then all that is is like you said, just kind of kink the water hose, and this is actually like cutting the, actually the water hose off. That's right. And the thing about it too is, is everybody needs at least two people that knows what's going on on the job, like in right. our situation in the crew. That way, if something happens to me, I'm bad enough and incapacitated. Derek or Kevin or somebody you got to have somebody who can take the bull by the horns and get it done and you also need somebody who knows what to do to get a hold of 911 to get yeah. the rescue people that's in right. your location that's right um, <laughs> that, that's the biggest thing y'all face right yeah. there over uh, anything yeah. else is getting in the right spot that's ain't right. it you know we did a class one time I think it's been several years ago and that's what it was I come out here and I asked these guys I said right now Give me directions to your job site on the telephone. That's right. And you know, when they looked at me like I was crazy, but I said, you know, a lot of way, you know, y'all go out these job sites, y'all find them, but when you actually try to tell somebody how to get here, mm -hmm. I mean, it's a lot of left and right, right. turns and stuff. Right now is a perfect example where we're at. Cell phone service is horrendous. Correct. If it locks on the GPS on the cell phone, it may be putting your location a half mile from where we're at right, right. now back to the 911 operator. It may not be no. exactly because it's triangulating yeah. into what it needs. So you kind of need to know where you go. But uh, I just want to go over this right quick. Yes, like sir. this man, everything we have to say to me. So he's coming out. He's going to talk about slip, trips, and spawn. I'm like, nah, dog, we're not doing that today. <laughs> <laughs> so appreciate it, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.